Welcome to a video where I will be discussing why the US cannot afford high interest rates. And the analysis that I'll be doing on this, it isn't especially specific to the US. There's other countries such as uh, the UK and also most of Europe as well that fits into this same basket of analysis. So, uh, before I get to the analysis, uh, the video is sponsored by Oranum. And if you are a precious metal investor, their, their website, they are a bullion company, but their website has got a lot of free resources. And the map is absolutely brilliant because you see this map and it shows you the gold spot price, how it's performing against every single currency in the world live. Uh, so that's really good for identifying uh, outliers such as the dark red countries and the dark green countries. You can do a little bit of research. So that's really good. So check that website out. So what uh, we've noticed this century is that the US has declined in peak interest rates. Back in 2000, the peak of the interest rates, and this is Fed funds rate, it's not necessarily uh, to do with the bonds uh, market, such as the 10 year benchmark yields and things like that. I'm literally looking at the Fed funds rate, which is what the Federal Reserve sets as their base rate. In uh, 2000, it was just over 7%. But rates peaked at just over 5% in 2007, and obviously this is just before the Great, uh, uh, the great Recession. 2019, obviously this was just before the lockdowns, but the Fed run, funds rate only got to 2.25%. And at the time of recording in summer 2022, the, the central banks are in a process of hiking. The Fed funds rate is 1.75%. So we don't know where the peak is yet, because uh, from what we can determine from the market, interest rates are going to go higher from here. Uh, but, but this is the reason why that the federal funds rates and other base rates are peaking at lower peaks. And it's to do with the amount of interest on debt. Debt in the West is expanding and uh, it's, it's expanding in some instances uh, against GDP as well. So the debt to GDP ratio is growing. And as um, as we, we saw in the initial slides, uh, so the, there was a peak in interest rates in 2000, 2007, and in 2019. But what's interesting is what I done was I took the amount of debt in the US and I took the US's GDP. And the amount that if you if you multiply or what I've done is I multiplied the amount of debt by the Fed funds rate. And what I could see is that in 2000 at the peak at that time when the interest rates actually peaked, the US was spending about 34 percent, so 33.8 percent of GDP on just interest payments. So on servicing their debt. In 2007, a very similar amount, they were spending 32.44 percent. In 2019, they were spending just over a quarter of GDP on interest rates, on the or interest payments. Sorry. The current position at, so in 2022, with a Fed funds rate of 1.75, the US is currently spending under a quarter of their GDP on debt interest. But this is where it gets a little bit interesting because a Fed's fund rate of 3%, now, bearing in mind that inflation is running at about eight or nine percent, so a federal funds rate of three percent would mean that the US will need to spend 40 percent of GDP just on debt interest payments because the debt burden is becoming so large. And this is unprecedented. From the records that I could see, the, the US has never spent that amount of GDP on debt interest. And also it's unsustainable as well. They can't they can't sustain that. You can't spend 40% of your income on debt servicing. And you can see this in a graph. So this is this is not new data. This is just data that I've already spoke about. But you can see um, at the top, the top uh, sort of pie chart, you can see that um, how much of GDP is being spent on interest at 3% Fed funds rate. Some people actually believe it will go above 3% or it needs to go above 3% to bring down inflation. At 3%, they're spending 40%. That's that's crazy. So what we can determine from this is that growing debt, so more debt you take on, the more pain will be caused by higher interest rates. 
and high interest rates and gold. See, this is the thing that traders are conditioned to say that if interest rates go up, then you should sell gold. It's bearish gold. But one thing that is, is changing here is that the amount of leverage in corporations, in households through mortgages and things like that, and also governments, is that the more leverage there is, the higher the, the, the higher sensitivity there is to higher interest rates. And basically what can happen is if interest rates uh, go back to moderate historical uh, rates, that can cause a lot of pain in the economy and cause a lot of pain because a lot of people on, on fixed uh, mortgages that expire and then they re need to renew their mortgage uh, deals, they're going to have to do that at higher interest. So more of their income will be spent on just interest payments, which means less disposable income to spend elsewhere. Same thing with government applies as well. So where could we be going next? Well, let's look at the Bank of Japan because the, the Bank of Japan is an interesting case because they was actually the first to embark on this quantitative easing thing. They were the first uh, central bank that decided to quantitative ease. And what they started in uh, 2022 is yield control. So they said, we are not going to let our bond yields go above a certain threshold. And if the if they have to defend that, which they have done, they will just print yen and they will quantitative ease. And it led to an absolute collapse of the Japanese yen. And I think that this is a blueprint for where other central banks will go. They will just be like, look, we can't sustain paying higher interest rates on our debt because the debts become such a big burden. So we're just going to do yield control. And uh, I think that this is the second point is quite important as well, because central banks are mandated to protect the economy and employment levels. They will sacrifice the value of their currency to protect employment levels and the wider economy. And you can see that in Japan. And I, I think that this is where we're going. I think that the dollar, the euro, the pound, these sorts of uh, major currencies, they're, they're going to take a bath in the next uh, decade because the central banks will devalue in order to bring everything else, such as uh, the bond yields and also the, the, the well, the, basically the bond yields. They will, they will do what they can. And what they will do is they will just print a load of currency buy the own, their own government bonds with that currency, which will bring uh, push the bonds up and the yields down. So this is what you are going to see over the next decade or two. Currencies, I'm not saying they're going to collapse, but they're certainly going to devalue against hard assets such as uh, commodities.